Hey guys, National Master James Canty III here, and today we're covering nasty tricks in the C3 Sicilian against move 2, Knight F6 by Black. Let's get right into it. Before we get started, hit the subscribe button, smash that button, hit the like button, share this video, put your comments under the video. I really appreciate all the love, guys. Now let's get right into it. Here we go. E4, C5, C3. In the previous video, we went over my favorite variation of face, which is the Knight C6 lines, but this one is more common. Knight F6, and you also have D5 as a move too, which I stated in the other video as well, but Knight to F6 is the next move. So this is the move we're covering today, Knight F6. Now in the Knight F6 two, uh, move two, Knight F6, they go here, so they're threatening this pawn. There's things that can happen here. You can go a Danny Kopeck system, is what they is what they call that, when you go Bishop D3 and then you back it up, Bishop C2 and D4. Um, you also have maybe other options, F3, which is kind of passive, depends on what kind of position you're playing. And then uh, you have E5 and you have Queen E2 and Queen C2. These are moves you can make, even Queen A4, right? But these are ways to defend the pawn. The best way to, to defend this pawn is actually by just pushing it. I actually just uh, attack the knight. So this is what I always do here. E5. Now, after E5, the knight has many squares. Uh, G4, which is not a move, but it is a square. Knight H5, knight G8, knight E4, knight D5. These are all moves that can happen. Knight E4 almost never, ever happens. It's just a problem problematic move. Um, going Knight E4. If you go Knight E4, you can get in trouble automatically with D3, and the knight's just trapped. So you can't go anywhere. You, the, the, the knight is literally trapped. You have nowhere to go. Nowhere to go there. So Knight E4 usually never happens, right? But Knight to D5, this is the standard. And this is what happens. This is actually the main move. Yeah. So knight to d5. Knight to d5 is the main move here. And when knight d5 happens, there's two ways white can go here. It's usually knight f3 or d4. They kind of transpose into the same way. I just like to play d4. And and what's funny is sometimes I'll play knight f3. It doesn't actually really matter here. But I usually go d4. And after d4, there's capture and capture. Knight to f3. So I have a nice uh, knight to c6 sir, first. And then knight f3. Or they'll do this for black. d6 and break up this pawn structure as quickly as possible. There's a, a thing that always happens, guys. When you have a strong center like this, it needs to be broken up. So black needs to attack it with moves like F6, D6, and you wanna bully the center and eliminate it. So if you're able to do that or even create an isolated pawn, black has some targets with this nice knight here. That's what this is talking about. Now, there's a way to play this, actually. That's not the move, but as black, they'll go D6 or knight to C6 here is what I see a lot. So let's go with D6 and then I'll go knight F3 here. You can capture this, you can play bishop g4, you can play knight to c6. There's many moves here. The main move that I see the most, this is what we're covering today, the most is actually knight to c6 in this position, or it actually transposes in this manner after d4, knight to c6 first, then knight f3, then d6. Now, we get to this We get to this position, right? Once we get here, what do you think you play here is white? This is a well-known C3 Sicilian position. If you're a C3 Sicilian player, you can look up this position in particular, and you can actually see what moves have been played here. Now, I play this over the board. I played this online. I played this so many times, and I always get very, very good positions with white. So let's see what happens here. Now, I'll give you five seconds here to figure out what would you do. What is the main move usually for white? Now, you have two options here, actually. You have bishop c4, which you'll see mostly. Bishop c4, you actually have three. I'll say three options because I've done bishop d3 here as well. But I don't, I don't usually do that. Actually, I don't ever do it anymore. Usually when it's e6, I play bishop to d3. But bishop d3 is a line. Bishop c4 is another line. This is like main, main line stuff. And they go knight b6, back the bishop up. If they take this, you can play d5. And it gets a little tricky here. Or even sometimes you'll, they'll, you'll just take it after g6. Castles, knight to c3, d5. Knight a like this. This is fine for black. Black's okay, and white still has some aggression, but not. This is not the line I like to play. Now, if you said knight to c3, you are absolutely correct. There is two ways to go here for black. You can capture on the pawn first, or you can capture the knight first. Either or, white still has some pretty good positions, especially if they take the knight first. Now, let's go into both lines. I'm actually going to go into the dull line first, is what I'll say. And it looks are very deceiving in chess, and I highly recommend you check out the last video on the C3 Sicilian against my favorite variation with knight to c6, because there's a line in there that it, you, you double pawns, doubled f pawns, you play a knight b5, the knight can come in here and snag your rook, but you can get his rook. That's wild. It's ridiculous, but that's how chess is a lot of times and looks are very deceiving in chess. With that being said, I'll show you this line. Pawn takes pawn, okay? This is usually the, the boring line. I actually got this position over the board versus International Master Keaton Kiura. 
from um Kiora. It's like K I E W R A. Kiora. It's extremely hard to pronounce, but shout out to him. So he's a international master in uh California. California played in the Chicago Open. International master though, and we played this over the board. So Pawn takes, knight takes c3. After knight takes c3, queen takes d8 check. And that, let's actually take a look at this for a second too. After knight takes c3, right? Why, what's the problem here? Well, I, I can't castle. So if I just take this with my knight, then I can't castle. And I also have a weird pawn structure. Like I have an isolated pawn here. And this one is out here in the open by himself, kind of. I can't like easily get to this pawn with my other pawn right now this is not the route we kind of go maybe bishop g4 might actually be pretty good especially castle queen side like this is not what you wanted out of the opening especially with white so let's go back and let, you have to capture first queen takes d8 but then again you know c3 sicilian is a uh, very sharp opening in many ways and i'm not a, a super like in-game person trading off my queens and like just going to in-games very quickly especially if you don't know what you're doing knight takes and king takes are both options here knight takes is the better one principle because you can still castle if you take with the king then there's no way to castle you just i mean you can you can hand castle but it just takes longer to do so and the king gets vulnerable to like all kind of stuff so you got to be extremely careful so knight takes is the usual move and then after that, pawn takes c3. Now, uh, I remember Evgeny Sveshnikov, uh, one of my, actually, the guru when it comes to c3 Sicilian play. I studied all of his games. And when that comes when it comes down to the c3 Sicilian in this position, what he does is actually play knight to d4. This is the idea. You want to remember ideas over moves, guys. Ideas over moves. So let's take a look at this position. This is a dull position for white in, in our uh, usual c3 Sicilian lines. is super sharp stuff, which I'm going to show you, actually, after this dull line. But uh, what, 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 what happens here is like, okay, we have to look at the entire board. What is going on? We have uh, separated pawns here, isolated, isolated, but we also have an open file. And development's very nice for us, very quick. The bishops can get out within a move, literally. And the knight is uh, it's a better square than his, than his counterpart. We can go d4. This is not technically isolated, especially if I can play knight d4 and f4 and just have a comfortable game here and keep some pressure on his b file for this pawn. If he plays b6 in some manners, I can play a4 and a5 just to loosen it a little, more, a little more and sometimes even create a pass pawn for myself. I can steal castle. I have a check looming. So there's a lot of things that can happen here. A lot of things that can happen. There's a lot of counterplay for white here. Very rich position. And I remember Evgeny Sveshnikov actually in this position. Uh, well, black played, I think, g6. And after g6, knight d4 was the immediate move by Evgeny Sveshnikov. Now, uh, after knight d4, what he does is f4 to make sure this is bolstered. So after bishop g7, f4 is very bolstered. And then bishop e3, bishop d3, and king to d2. Castles, bishop e3, just to develop. Bishop d3, let's, let me just make a move here like uh, bishop e7 you could play king d2 but of course castles doesn't move too so there's many ways that you can play this but i i, I got a draw in a slightly better end game against uh keaton kiera uh, for an international master from cali so it was very nice that I, I was able to 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 get that draw and actually just have a better draw especially against a strong opponent like himself but uh this is one way white can go now there's another way that i actually like to study too like if they go knight to c6 sometimes i'll play bishop b5 sometimes i'll play rook b1 sometimes i'll play h3 or bishop f4 now h3 i don't like as much because it is slightly a passive move the idea is just stopping bishop to g4 but he can just develop you don't have to do anything um at all and actually let's turn on the engine here and see what the engine says so it's equal best move rook b1 so you're just tying this pawn down. But what if he wants to move his bishop? So let's say he goes b6. Best move now uh, is bishop to b5, threatening the knight. So bishop b5, bishop d7, completely equal game here. Uh, e6, really, that's nice. E6 and then takes. This is interesting. I like this kind of stuff because you can come back and get this pawn later. And then I'm going to castle and I'm going to play rookie one and then have some bolstering uh, pressure here. Knight g5 is going to follow and you just, it's better for white to play. This bishop's annoying. Pieces are still locked in. It's very, very interesting. Very, very interesting what kind of compensation you can get, um, in this, uh, in this opening here. I've also had, op uh, times where after take g6, maybe like knight d4, bishop g7, f4, I, I get my bishop in this manner. So maybe castles, bishop e2. So if he plays b6, then bishop f3. And this is extremely annoying for his position. I mean, my bishops are like swiping the board. I'm like, clearly, clearly better like almost winning rick c8 knight here maybe it just feels right it feels better you calling the shots here this is pretty bolstered castle again an interesting way to play very interesting there's a lot of a lot of play here and white is doing just fine in these positions with pawn takes now you of course you have other ways to do it as well sometimes if i've been playing a player for a while um and we understand that 
and they, they always take this pawn, I just start playing different stuff. So I'll play other lines. Maybe I'll capture. Maybe I'll play bishop d3. I usually never play the bishop c4 one because it's just not fun at all. So, okay, now let's go back to the original line here. After knight f3, d6, knight, uh, sorry, knight to c3. After knight to c3 happens, this is the critical moment where, man, even strong players fall for this. I mean, this is... This is very, very like sharp stuff, guys. I'm giving you, this is going to be, of course, in the course too as well. But this is extremely solid and cool stuff right here. I mean, this is a nasty trick right here. So here we go. Knight takes c3. This is the main line stuff. When knight takes c3 happens, it's about to get wild. After knight takes, pawn takes. Now, I mean, you, I, I can almost guarantee they're probably going to take this pawn. 98% of the time, they're going to take this pawn. After pawn takes, what do you do now is white. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, I guarantee black is thinking you're going to take this e-pawn. That's just exactly what they're thinking. They probably have it on pre-move that you're about to take this e-pawn. But, pause. What do you actually do? Five seconds. What move do you actually make? The move is actually d5. So, we pushed him right past, the, right past them here. And we're going to attack this knight. There's two ways... The knight, well, really, really three. One of them is the correct way. The other two are not correct. And I'll actually show you. And there, one way is like semi-correct because you still got to make good moves. And I'll tell you, I've be, beaten GMs online, IMs online, the best of the best that can play in this position have gotten in a lot of trouble with these tricks. So let me show you. And let's, let's start with knight b8. Now let's start with knight a5. Knight a5 loses on the spot. Start a new one. Send the stretcher. That's not a move. Oh my goodness. Knight a5. Here we go. After knight a5, now what do you do, guys? Take your time. You can pause the video. What do you do? Knight a5 is on the board. It's your move. Here's the big boy move. If you're ready and you 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 got your big boy pants on today, it's going to be bishop b5. Check. Okay? The knight can't go back, obviously, for obvious reasons. You're not going to block with the queen. I mean, you definitely can if you like. But bishop to d7 is actually the best move. After bishop d7, well, what is this? Okay, well, I am being attacked. My b5 bishop is attacked. This pawn is hanging. But we need something else to do. What else can we attack? The more threats you make, I tell my students this all the time. Shout out to you if you're watching this video. But you remember, you have to keep making the threats and, and keep making them in a row. So you have to keep making the threats. Bishop b5, legit threat. It's a check. Bishop d7, here it is. Hopefully you found it. If not, pause the video. See if you can find the next move. We're going to continue. Queen a4, and the game is already over. I don't even want to turn on the engine. It's already over. Queen a4 is the move. And, you, man, so many strong players I've gotten in this position. And I actually found this over the board. Not over the board. Uh, I was playing. Uh, I got this position just playing the c3 Sicilian. And I was like, you know what? Let's just try this. Oh, bam. And then you start finding stuff. And then you start hitting it with the engine, and it just becomes something even greater than what it was. Now, actually, queen a4 is a super strong move. What's going on here? Well, let's see. Let's make a random move. Or not even a random move, a real legit move. a6, which I have seen many times. And e6. But a6, what is this about? Well, there's pressure here. So I want to move this bishop out of the way. If I, if I move anywhere besides capturing the bishop, I'm going to lose my queen. So I need to capture this. There's only one way to capture Queen takes d7, and the knight is hanging. So they call that overloading. The queen is literally overloaded here. Well, so the queen's overloaded, defending both of these. So if you make any move, any other, even even h6, e6, f6, anything, 6, I'm going to take on d7, besides b6. I'm going to take on, on, B, on d7, and then queen takes, and then I take the knight. I go up a full piece here, and I should be easily able to convert this. Uh, now, if you if you can't convert this, we got other problems. That means you just need to trade pieces down. Trade all your pieces down. Trade when you're up, not when you're down. You're up a full piece, so trade the rest of your pieces off and uh, eliminate his own. So, but queen a4, right? The main move here is, oh, especially if they're good, they're going to realize, you know what? My pieces are overloaded. These are overloaded. I have a huge problem here. Because these are overloaded, I need to defend it. So they defend with b6. And then after b6, the knight is completely defended now. And now the big boy star move. One of my favorites here. One of my favorites. Pause the video. If I give you three seconds, can you find it? That's way more than three seconds. And here we go. Knight takes c5. Bam. Right there. The game is over. Drop the mic. He should be pressing resign or about to because this is over. Knight takes e5. The bishop is hanging. 
It's now hit three separate times. My queen, bishop, and knight all hit the same piece. So after bishop takes b5, queen takes b5, and have a good day. The game is over. You can block with the knight if you like. I don't care how you do it. It's checkmate on the move. Very, very beautiful. And this will happen in your games. I promise you this will happen. I've had this so many times. Every time it happens, especially in like bullet games or blitz games, I'm just like, oh, got him already. You can just turn around, start talking, cook some food, whatever you want to do. This is over. This is already over. I know everything from this position. It's it's a wrap. So it's uh it, it's so nice to be able to have this little trick. All because the knight goes to a5. And why do they go here in the first place? Well, in the first place, they're saying like, you know what? I don't want to go backwards. And I don't, I want to move my knight. Of course, I want to keep it. So they go knight a5. This is the logic behind the move. Bishop b5 check. And then bishop b7. They think they're just, they're just fine. You're going to probably trade. You get your pawn back. I'm okay. But they don't expect queen a4. Queen a4 wins on the spot. How about, what if they take it themselves? If bishop takes, then that's check. And then queen d7, and again, it just hangs. The knight hangs. There's no way out of that position. Once bishop b5 is on the board, they are going to lose a piece. If they try to keep the piece, b6, then you play knight takes c5, and the game is virtually over. It's not virtually. It is over. There's nothing they can do, and there's a win for you. Now, that is that line. That's knight a5, right? Then you have knight to b8. Knight to b8, this is a string, extremely fun one as well. I've gotten super strong players with this one. Because knight to b8, they're like, you know what? I'm going to back up and put my knight on d7. Now, if you're going to play white here, guys, what would you do now? Take your time. What do you do with the white pieces now? The move here is not bishop b5 check because of bishop to d7. So then you have to trade, and then you, it, you're you still fine here. And actually, probably maybe queen e2. Uh, it's just like not what we wanted. You still have some play, and this was pretty sharp, and etc. You feel good, you know, comfortable position, whatever. But I'm not into that. I always play knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. Now, nobody's playing bishop to d7. Who wants to just give up this bishop? I mean, that's just really bad to do. I honestly don't even ever remember getting that as a move, bishop d7. But knight to d7, I get literally 99% of the time. And maybe they'll do g6, but I've never seen that many times either. h4, h5 is annoying for them. So knight d7, though. Knight d7 happens. He's like, yeah, I'm about to trade off the knight. Get rid of this knight. Get rid of all your play. Get rid of all your tricks. And then uh, we'll play a regular, even, equal game here is what Black's saying with knight to d7. But he is in a little bit of trouble here if he doesn't act accurately. Knight to d7. Many strong players, master and above, have failed to equalize here after this next move. And that move is bishop to b5. Bishop to b5. We pin the knight. It seems simple. What is, what is your natural reaction here as black? You play with the black pieces here. Flip, flip the board. I'm going to flip the board. Flip the board. You play with the black pieces here. And you tell me what you're going to do. There's only probably one move you thought about here one and maybe maybe two of course but definitely one if you thought f6 right now you in trouble queen h5 whoa hold up but how about this a6 you know what we need to trade everything off so this is what black is anticipating takes 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 queen takes and you're like you know what we need to trade everything off i'm fine i got rid of all your pieces all your fun stuff's gone you're not sagging anything we just bought to play this real slow that's what black says now we back it up we don't have to do any of that Equal or stronger threats. My students know about this too. We know about the special book we use as well. Of course, that's in the membership course. You get that under the video, become a member. But after a6, b5 is hit, right? You know, I don't have to move this. I'm going to actually threaten mate, but there's two ways to do it. Queen f3 and queen h5. Which one's better? Pause the video. We wait and we wait for you to figure it out. If you figured it out, great. If you didn't, you're going to figure it out right now. Here it is. Queen to F3 is the move. Queen H5 is wrong because of re re reversing the move order, guys. That's a huge, a huge uh, concept I like to teach students all the time is if you have two moves you're considering, try to do both of them, but reverse the move order if you do have that combination available. And what I mean is like if Queen H5, G6, okay, I got to stop mate. There's nothing else I can do. Queen f3, he goes f6. Now, what do I do as white? Everything's defended. My pawns look a little weird here. I got a hole on e6. Virtually, white's just better. But and especially, we would have to go into this kind of line. Where white just got a hole on e6, castles, and like put a rook there, and like slow ball it, and end up winning this game. I mean, even castles, 
rook e1 after you castle put the rook on e1 play bishop a3 and just double on this file and like it's a gross position for black to play but actually what if i reverse the move order what if i reverse it queen f3 first how did you have to play f6 or else you, just, you get made it and then queen h5 oh my goodness queen h5 and they're sitting here looking at the board like why do i play this game queen h5 check g6 has to be played to stop the mate knight takes g6 because if pawn takes well oh yeah take the rook but mate's better than taking the rook right so here's mate on the board now what actually happens and this is why i love analyzing my games i for the longest time i used to always play to this move watch this the best move on the board by the way for black is queen a5 that's the best move best move all the strong players find it queen a5 absolutely now for the longest time I want you to actually tell me what I played here. For the longest time, what what would you do here with white? What is your move? What would you do after this? 10 seconds. It should be an easy think, right? Take the rook. It's free. It's with check. I'm crushing him. There's this is over. Like start a new game, right? But when I analyze my game, this is why you analyze one one or games that you have one as well. You want to analyze those because you find faster wins. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been taking this rook. But the engine gave me this line. Mate in two, and it's forced. Knight f4 check. King d8. And sealing the blow with knight e6. Mate. Beautiful. You can pre-move it because there's no way out of it. And it's extremely great. It's, it's so cool. This is probably... Uh, my my favorite variation was yes was yesterday's video that I posted, but or two days ago, but the last video, that that's my favorite variation when they play knight c six. But this one is like it's force is the it's probably the best forced line and one of the best tricks you can ever play in this opening with knight f six with the knight f six line. So that's it. This that that's it. Let's run this run it from the top and show you guys how that looks again. E four c five c3 knight f6 you push on the knight they go knight d5 okay knight d5 you can play d4 or knight f3 honestly it really doesn't matter d4 pawn takes takes knight f3 or knight c6 or d6 they're kind of the same move almost knight to c6 knight f3 d6 knight c3 they're going to take this way or they're going to take the knight first most people really just take the knight first because they're like yeah i'm going to take the knight just and then I'm gonna take here because they think that you're going to take this back. I promise you. So pawn takes d5. Knight has to go somewhere, and uh, oh, we actually have to cover e4 too. That's the last move. But knight a5 and knight to b8 are the moves. If they go knight a5, loses on the spot. You should be smiling. You should just give them extra time. You know, add time on the clock. Whatever. You know, go get a drink of water. Whatever you want to do. Bishop b5 check, and then bishop d7, queen a4. Game's over. You can't. The queen's overloaded once again. Um, b6 to defend the knight knight takes e5 have a good day it's over now the other one is actually uh the my favorite here which is knight b8 knight takes e5 knight d7 bishop to b5 to pin him and oh that's nothing kick him away just trade all the pieces but you thought we were trading the pieces and this is actually this knight has to stay here for all this to happen and that's why the bishop is nice to use this here to bait them into playing a6 f6 and then check and then g6 knight takes if you take here that's made on a move so they're like oh i need an escape square i need to get out i gotta go somewhere right now queen c7 queen b6 is the only way not to be made it queen b6 and the only way it's not made is because you're just giving up the queen here you're just like giving, giving up the queen which i'm taking a knight next if you take my bishop oh my goodness you can't castle you know let's get to this let's just get this off the screen this is a family channel so queen a5, queen, oops, check, check here, actually, queen a5 is the best move, or uh, not really, it's actually mate, queen b6 is the best move, but queen a5 is the move that's played the most often, queen a5, knight check, and then knight e6, mate on the move, what a play, now, what's the correct way, now, the correct way to play this, which we're only going to cover just a little bit of it, because it gets deep into theory, and you need to know your stuff, which, of course, I do have that coming up in the course, but now, knight to c3, right, after knight c3, takes, 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 d5, they go e4 so this is now it gets tricky if i take well I, first off i can take here and then take here and then it gets kind of wild if you try to grab a little bit more material here you actually drop material yourself because the rook falls in the end so that's no good so you would have to take here first 
And then after takes, just like a gross looking position, almost the same amount of material, actually, three, four, five, I was actually down a pawn. So not the same amount of material, but we do have bishops. We can't castle, he can, and we got rooks. This is not what we wanted at all by far. So we have to make a move. So what do you think you do here in this position? You have to move somewhere. You got to move your knight. Where are you going? The move here is actually knight to g5. Knight to g5 is best because we're going to capture here. We're just going to play active. Play active. Now, the, the engine, uh, not the engine, but usually you can, in this position, you actually can go knight a5, I think, because there's no problem. So if they go knight a5, check. It doesn't work anymore, especially if they go b6. Maybe it does, because I've, I've never actually had people play knight a5. But if they do go knight a5, queen a4, it, it's just, it looks a little different. b6, takes, takes. And you actually snag a pawn out of here, so this could be good. This is a little weak, and I, I prefer white still, but and this is bad. So it just, it just comes with accuracy. But knight a5 is usually never played, and they actually go knight e5, which is the strongest move. Knight b8, you're just kind of looking crazy. I just like to take this. And a cool little line here, knight d7, queen e2. What's that about? What is that about? Well, if he plays something like g6 or anything else, a6, something weird, and he's not aware of what's going on, there's mate on d6. So g6, just trying to think out of the bishop. Knight d6 is mate, and it's a beautiful way to checkmate here. Another little nasty trick, but usually the move is knight e5. For the longest time before I hit this with the engine, I would play queen to d4, or I would check them and play queen to d4. But after my studies and the theory was corrected, I actually have to take this first. And then after they make their move, which is usually e6 or g6, something like that, after e6, which could happen, I check them, and then I bring the queen around. And they're in a little bit of trouble here. You have to be very, very accurate, and if you're not, you're in trouble. You also have d6, which could eventually happen. You have knight to g6, and I can play bishop c4. Pawn takes, queen takes. I'm actually threatening this. I'm threatening the castle. It's like, whoa, like, they're not prepared for this. I guarantee your opponent is not prepared for this one. So it's extremely, extremely uh, weird, and it gets um, pretty good. And if something like bishop to e6, you have a check here, and then once they block, you can snag a pawn due to, oh, rook b8. And then you take and you actually win some material. So the idea is this in here. So that could easily happen as well. But that's the main line. That's actually the best way to play it there. Uh, but you, you do have to do your homework, guys. And this is the tricks that I love in the C3 Sicilian. This is only partial on ways uh, that you can uh, fight the Sicilian. And with nasty tricks and just this line alone, this is the Knight of Six line. One of the many Knight of Six lines that you have. But there's many tricks and ideas that I will cover later. But um, that's today's video, guys. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you like this, um, put some comments under the video. Subscribe. Share the video. Really appreciate all that stuff, guys. And make sure you join the membership course, the membership site, GM Factory. I just post uh, videos for you guys every week. So you got some stuff to cover and look at and uh, learn how we train and et cetera and stuff like that, guys. Follow the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash GM That link is under the video as well, guys. I appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next video.